was like Kevin Von Erich, who was the lone yeah. surviving of the brothers. I thought he had a great look. I talked to I, Kevin periodically. He's, he's in, in Hawaii now. Right, right. And he was a very athletic worker, acrobatic before before his time. And he never really went off the rails like like the other brothers, as evidenced by the fact that he's still around. Yeah, yeah. Great kid. Stiff. Oh. Really? Those, those kicks. <laughs> That running knee, that running knee in the corner. Oh, wow. I believe he played running back because he ran over me every night. <laughs> <laughs> now, we're 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 uh, we're Kerry and David Stiff. How are they as workers no, in that regard? Not, not at all. Whole different ball game. Uh, David was as smooth as could be. Kerry was such a great athlete, but he was very unpredictable. And he would go. I would. I'll give you an example. I would take Kerry. Sell this, boom. I chop him to go down, and and I turn around and turn my back on him for a second, which I've told everyone's fundamentally a mistake anyway. But it just I, th- I would think that he would sell it for a second. I would turn around, he'd drop him right in the head. <laughs> I say I didn't I didn't call that. Where do we go now? <laughs> the story where he lost his foot because the motorcycle accident and yeah. kept wrestling. Yeah. I, I, I saw that, 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 that really cracked him. Yeah, and, and that's a shame because I think if the people had known the truth about it, it might have made him a bigger hero to persevere after such an injury because i, I got to be honest, if there was a difference in his work, a major difference after that accident, I didn't notice it. Well, it took him a long time for it to heal up, but no, that nobody knew it. And he, you know, he didn't change the boot in front of anybody, but... I think anytime it's like these, like my friend Mongo has got ALS now. When you've been a world class athlete, and Kerry was, you know, he threw the, he was only maybe 30 feet behind a world record in the discus at the University of Houston when a guy named Mac Wilkins had the discus record of 230 feet. I think Kerry was throwing it close to 200 feet, um, which would make him a world class athlete. When you suffer a, a loss or a, uh, an injury like that, especially when you basically lost, you know, a hand or a foot. It, it's I to me, I, I can understand why it cracked him. Um, but it, the thing about Kerry, you can never say anything bad about Kerry. He was such a nice kid. Uh, but um, I've seen him. I've seen him. <laughs> hey, I'll just put it like this: He's the only guy I've ever seen that could hang with Roddy Piper. Ever. What do you mean? Okay, so we're on a flight to Europe. Road Warriors, Nasty Boys, Piper, da da da, da all, all the, the wild bunch, right? We're going to Europe. Okay, so I, without saying names, they were shaving each other's eyebrows off while they were all cold and everything else, right? It was Piper and the only two left standing. I'm watching this because I don't, I didn't, I only participated in the booze, as you know. The only two standing left because there was a, 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 a superior competition going on with about eight of the guys. The only two standing were Roddy and, <laughs> and Kerry Von Erich. <laughs> I used to call Roddy, uh, oh God, what do they call him? J- John Wesley Harden, the fastest gun in the West. <laughs> now, uh... Only one John Wesley, but Kerry could hang with him. Now, the uh, younger two kids, Mike and Chris, they, they yeah. never should have wrestled, should they? No. No, well, you know, you, but I've tasted something funny. So this is where Mike, I, I, Chris, I don't think, I didn't know he wrestled, but Mike, I wrestled Mike. The stipulation was we went to that 15,000 uh, foot, that 15,000 um, attendance building in Fort Worth. I can't remember the name of it. And I had to beat Mike in 10 seconds. Uh, if I couldn't beat Mike in no in ten, ten minutes, if ten I couldn't, minutes, right? I remember this. If I couldn't beat him in ten minutes, then Kerry got a rematch. And here's little Mike, right? Well, he was. They, they were so over at the end of the ten minutes. I cut myself when he had the claw on me. <laughs> True story. Well, we almost had it. But, but he just had we, so much problem mentally. Oh, he was just too small. He, he, he was Jack Veneno. He weighed 160 pounds. But he was, those Von Eric were so over that if I just got him down for a second, the crowd was going crazy. So I just said, David, just watch this. 
because I was supposed to have him in a figure four, and he, he's being so tough, he wouldn't he wouldn't give up, right? So I said, screw this. <laughs> and of course, they all hollered at me afterwards. But as we sold out arena, the uh, reunion arena a week later, or whatever it was, a month later, but I. He was so over that I said, I don't need to put the figure four in him. I said, Mike, throw me in the ropes, drop kick me, and go, go to put, or take a roll outside, post me, roll me back in and put the claw on me. So he threw me in the ropes, drop kick me, which he was a good drop kicker. I rolled out to the floor, he threw me in the post. I zapped myself, threw me back in. I said, put the claw on me. He said, what? It's supposed to figure four. I said, Mike, just put the claw on me. He put the claw on me and I fought it for a minute. <laughs> the people went crazy. Me, that was great. Uh, the people went crazy. Yeah. Why would I put the figure four in a guy when he's when they're tearing the building down, right? 